Hi everyone, this is Lee from Smart Excel Tools LLC. Today's video is about a simple but very helpful tool used for organizing ideas. The tool is sometimes called the KJ method, but you're more likely to hear it called an affinity diagram. Affinity diagrams are one of the seven management and planning tools, and they've been around really in one form or another probably since antiquity. Uh, people have been organizing ideas for a very, very long time in this manner, but really they came to prominence in the 20th century. The diagram itself is composed of ideas grouped under headings, and I'll show you a quick example here. Here's your basic affinity diagram. It's got headings and then uh, ideas below it. These could also just be topics. All kinds of different things could be organized under here. And really when, we're, when we say an affinity diagram, I mean really you're talking about the process of building the affinity diagram as well as the output itself. And because of this, in my experience, this sometimes leads to a little confusion with another tool called an affinity analysis, which is similar but a uh, different process used in data analysis. Maybe we'll cover that in the future uh, on another video. But for now, we're just going to talk about affinity diagrams. So <clears throat> these are used for many different things. Um, and, you know, <laughs> everything from organizing a bookshelf, which is the example I have here, to... Uh, you know, uh, figuring out customer complaints and the categories and how they overlap. So, how do you build an affinity diagram in Excel? So, <clears throat> there's a couple different ways to do it, and I'll show you two. And one of them is really just to use the built-in um, rectangles and shapes that are in Excel, and one of them is to use the free Smart Six Sigma Toolkit add-in. And the steps themselves are pretty easy. And so I'll cover those really quickly here. So step one is really to record your thoughts or ideas on cards or sticky notes. And I, I suggest doing this really in person um, with physical sticky notes or cards if you can meet in person with your team. Uh, if not, then you'd want to do it virtually. And that's when uh, using a tool like Excel or another tool that's out there um, which allows you to build virtual versions of affinity diagrams is useful. Then you would sort them into groups based on the team's thoughts. Often this is done silently through several rounds of rotation, uh, each person taking multiple turns until the group settles on a common, on a, uh, common topics. Uh, sometimes you'll find that uh, something bounces around between topics, and so maybe you'll make another card or something to make sure it gets into both. I'll uh, do a quick walkthrough of how that might work, so if you wanted to build one, um, how you might do it in Excel. but. This is also how you would do it um, you know, in, in real life with real cards and real sticky notes as well. So let's work through a quick example of how to build one in Excel. So let's launch Excel here. Now there's a lot of different software programs out there. You, could, you can buy lots of different solutions to do this electronically, but building it right in Excel is, is uh, very advantageous for many reasons. You have it already in a format that uh, others are used to looking at. You can share it easily. You know, you don't have to get used to a new program. You probably already own Excel. So um, let me just show you how you would do it manually in Excel, and then I can show you how, you how you would do it with Smart Six Sigma as well. So if you go to the Insert tab, the Insert ribbon, and uh, go to Shapes, and then you can use any of these shapes to build your diagrams. Typically you're going to use Rectangle to capture your ideas. You might even want to copy this, paste it, you know, get a few of these up here so you can use them. Write your ideas on here. Just make up stuff, idea one, you know, idea two. Of course you put the actual idea that you have. <laughs> idea three, you know, etc. And then you'd use a different type of uh, rectangle for a heading. So you might say, like, idea one and two turns out they group together to be in heading one. After you go through your process, so you group them under here. You know, maybe you change the color of this. <clears throat> Whatever makes sense, right? So that's one way to do it, I, you know, and that's free. <laughs> and another free way to do it would be to use Smart Six Sigma. So 
Let me just pull the Smart Six Sigma ribbon down. Go to Affinity Diagram, it's under Define. You get this little workspace here with a few buttons. So you add your ideas. Um, Smart, Six Sigma, Smart Six Sigma automatically changes the idea to one, two, etc. But of course, you're going to replace these with real ideas. Let's say I wanted to organize my bookshelf. You know, and my books, my books are kind of all over the place. This is not true, by the way. But let's say that's what we're going to do. Um, I might say, you know, some of the things that bother me are, you know, the books are hard to find. Um, they're getting dusty. Maybe they are falling behind the shelf. I don't know, let's put one more in here. Now let's put a few more. Okay, so now I've got a few different brainstormed ideas here. Uh, you'll see some of these are really just complaints about the current situation. Some of these are questions, you know. Now the idea would be to go through these and to group them. So if you were working with a team, you would have each individual. Uh, actually, this is typically the way you would do it. You could do it however you want. But typically the way you do it is to silently have each individual go through, take these, and group them in a way that makes sense to them. Then the next individual would go through move things around and, and make adjustments and you would keep doing that until you get through a couple times and hopefully get to the point where uh, things aren't getting moved a lot. Now if you find something goes into one more than one category like it keeps getting moved then you can make more than one note for it and uh, just put it in both. Okay so let's do that. Okay so let's see so books are hard to find. Okay so that's sort of like a organizational thing. Can't get the books I frequently use. It's kind of organizational. Many of these books are out of date. Okay, don't really know what to call it yet, but I'll put it over on the side here. I have electronic versions of some books. Okay, so maybe we're starting to see a theme with these ones. Maybe they're sort of, um, you know, do I need a real, uh, a real physical version of the book? Book genres and subgenres mix. Okay, that kind of goes over here into organization. Other items on bookshelf that don't belong. So this is like. Maybe other stuff, maybe organization. Do workbooks need to be in home or office? Uh, you know, organization, or is it uh, whether they're relevant or not? Probably maybe over here into whether they actually belong on the bookshelf or not. Books are crammed in, causing damage. Uh, probably put that this other one about damage. Tall books are pushed against small books. Fall on the shelf. Yeah, it's sort of like a damage complaint to Dusty. Yeah, maybe group these this way. So that's my pass at it. Now the next person would go through and do the same thing. You know, maybe they decide that, hey, you know, this falling behind the bookshelf is really about organization. They move it over here. And a lot of times they're subtleties. It doesn't really matter too much. So now that you have these, you would put them in a little bit more organized manner. and then you would add headings to them. So what would we call this? This is really about organization, so I'll add a topic. You know, this is organization. These ones are about, uh, say, damage. This one's more about like relevance, maybe, or this is. Sometimes when you build these topic headings, too, you'll decide, you know, maybe these groups are a little bit different than I think they should have been originally. Um, you know, I think in reading this, I'm starting to think, you know, these ones maybe all belong together. This is really about whether or not they belong on my bookshelf. Long. I 
great. <clears throat> now I've got all this. You can do with this what you want. You know, I would probably, in this case, I'd probably start to say, you know, how would I, how would I want to organize these? You know, what should I? What's my criteria for deciding whether or not these belong on my shelf? You know, it depends on your situation. You could come up with all kinds of different ways to approach this. Now, sometimes these get put into an Ishikawa diagram. Now, uh, you know, the fishbone diagram. Um, other different uh, kinds of scenarios. I've seen these feed into things like FMEAs um, and all kinds of stuff. So, anyway, that's it for uh, how to build one and using the uh, Smart Six Sigma toolkit. So, as I mentioned, uh, you can build these with real cards and notes, and I, f I really do favor that method uh, for teams who can meet in person, but in today's world of virtual meetings, using a virtual tool is often favorable, and there are several tools available. Uh, you can Google for those, and uh, among those tools includes the uh, Smart Six Sigma Toolkit, which is a free tool that's actually donation-based. So, the Smart Six Sigma Toolkit is a full suite of MSXL based Lean Six Sigma tools and it's 100% donation based. You can download it for free at www.smartexceltools.com. Great, that's it for today. I'd love to hear how you use Affinity Diagrams. Let me know in the comments. Please connect with me on LinkedIn at www.linkedin.com slash in slash Lee Duncan stat. And feel free to join my group there. And of course, check out the website www.smartexceltools.com where you can read my blog and free tools such as the Smart Six Sigma Toolkit. Thanks everyone for watching and until next time, remember, excel intelligently.